From the station working for you, this is WRTV News at Noon, streaming now. Well, if you know who you're voting for, you can start casting your ballot right now. Coming up, it's day one of early voting, and a lot of Hoosiers are not waiting to make their voices heard. Look at the line out there, Alyssa. You can see folks out there gathered today to vote, wearing some sweatshirts. It is a little chilly to start our day, but Alyssa Donovan is joining us here to talk about what we can expect for the rest of our day. Alyssa, a warm-up, right? That's right, and the good news is we have plenty of sunshine today, a little breezy out there as well, which is why people are probably bundled up a little bit. We've had those temperatures about 10 degrees warmer than we were yesterday, but still a bit of a chill in the air because of those breezy conditions we're seeing. But not a lot of cloud coverage today. Plenty of sunshine helping warm us up. Right now we are seeing those temperatures in the mid 60s as we head through the afternoon. We'll continue to climb into the low 70s. This is just the start of the warm up. But here's a look at those winds. So those wind gusts fairly strong. I think we just lost it on our sensor, but we did have a gust right around Indianapolis about 24 miles per hour or 25 mile per hour wind gusts in Muncie and 22 mile per hour wind gusts in Lafayette. Those winds right now out of the southwest. That's helping usher in some warmer air and we'll continue that warm up over the next couple days. Tonight, not going to be as chilly as it was last night or the night before. So we'll start tomorrow morning in the 50s. Then we'll climb almost into the 80s tomorrow. All right, Alyssa, thank you so much. New this midday, a motorcyclist dead after a crash on the southeast side of Indianapolis. Police tell us that the motorcycle was heading eastbound on East Raymond Street around 6.30 this morning when a bike was hit by another car turning westbound off North Oxford Street. The motorcyclist died at the scene. Their name has not been released. Police say the driver of the other vehicle is cooperating with investigators and was taken in for a routine blood draw. In Hendricks County, authorities are still asking for the public's help finding a missing 13-year-old girl. Natasha Stedge was last seen around 1140 Sunday night in the Danville area. Police are saying that she was wearing a long sleeve shirt with pink lettering and blue jeans the last time that she was seen. Take a good look at your screen if you've seen her or if you have any information, you're asked to call the Danville Police Department or 911. So Election Day is November 3rd, but voting is already underway here in the state of Indiana. Today was the first day Hoosiers could vote early, and the lines were long at several polling places. One of those was the city county building right here in Indianapolis. Dozens of people are lined up outside before the voting began this morning. One voter we spoke to says it was worth the wait. Just to beat the crowd, make sure that I don't get caught up in the rush, and just to get it over with and out of the way, make sure I exercise my right as early as possible. So early voting runs through noon on November 2nd. That's the day before Election Day. And by the way, hand-holding our microphone there belonged to an old friend, retired WRTV reporter Derek Thomas. He also happened to be in line for early voting today. Thanks for the assist, Derek. Well, Hancock County is another place where you may see some long lines today. Only one early voting location is open in Hancock County for the first two weeks of early voting. That's at the Hancock County Annex across the street from the downtown courthouse in Greenfield. The county's clerk says that you shouldn't have to wait too long if you plan ahead. I would just suggest that you, that you get there early or come at, at odd times during the day. Um, try to avoid, you know, first thing in the morning is always busy. Last thing in the afternoon is the busiest. The lunch hour gets a little more crowded. So if you can come, you know, between that um, 10 o'clock to noon time area or sometime after lunch, that there might be a reduction in lines at that time. Lofgreen there says that they've added safety measures in place for voters and poll workers. There will be one way in and one way out of all voting locations in Hancock County. Plus, they received a large order of PPE supplies so they can disinfect after each voter goes through. A reminder, we have your guide to this year's election right now on our website, WRTV.com. That includes all your dates that you need to know in order to make sure that your vote counts. Again, that's at WRTV.com slash vote in 2020. Well, the final votes will be cast exactly four weeks from today. President Trump is just out of the hospital, but he's still battling COVID-19. But he says he will return to campaigning soon. This as Joe Biden hits a key swing state today. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. 
The mask, a key symbol of deep divide in a contentious presidential race in the middle of a pandemic. Joe Biden continuing to wear a mask, calling it patriotic. On the other side, a still contagious President Trump defiantly taking off his mask in a staged made-for-TV moment outside the White House. Fresh from his release from Walter Reed Medical Center, where he received an unusual treatment of antiviral medications and steroids to treat COVID-19 over the weekend. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. Johns Hopkins University reporting more than 210,000 Americans have died from the virus. Since President Trump announced his diagnosis Friday, nearly 2,300 more Americans were reported to have died from COVID. <laughs> and unfortunately, the president doesn't get that. He don't care. We just have to be diligent and, and, and uh, you know, trust uh, health professionals and trust the president. I don't think he wishes Americans to just die. Former Vice President Biden with a 16-point lead amongst registered voters, according to a CNN SSRS poll out today. The Centers for Disease Control and the White House Coronavirus Task Force agreeing mask wearing is one of the effective ways of protecting against infection. What is this macho thing? I'm not going to wear a mask. What's the deal here? Big deal. Does it hurt you? Be patriotic, for God's sake. Biden urging Americans in an NBC News town hall to take the virus seriously, despite comments from the president, who has mostly downplayed COVID-19 since the pandemic began. I hope no one walks away with the message thinking that it is not a problem. It's a serious problem. It's a Biden is on the road in the key state of Florida Monday wearing a mask throughout his socially distanced events. The president's campaign trying to move forward as Trump recovers, overnight hosting its first virtual MAGA campaign event. And he fought for you, so I want you to fight back for him. Trump is vowing to get back on the campaign trail soon. His team saying he intends to be at the next debate set for October 15th, exactly two weeks after he tested positive. Biden says he'll do it if health experts say it's OK. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Well, the vice presidential debate still on for tomorrow night. Former Indiana Governor Mike Pence will face off against the Democratic nominee, Senator Kamala Harris. Our live coverage begins tomorrow night at 8 o'clock with a 2020 special. That's followed by the live debate at 9 p.m. Don't forget to stay tuned for the news at 11 right here on WRTV. Well, even as the White House is downplaying the virus, COVID-19 numbers in Indiana continue to be high. Today, 990 new cases were reported, along with 30 additional deaths. That's the most new deaths reported in a single day in quite some time. Also, hospitalizations are back over 1,100 statewide. This is the first time that number has risen over 1,000 since late May. We've well, got a lot of attention on the court, but this year's work off the court is winning honors for the Hoosier. Next, the award he's taking home and the initiative on the east side that helped him win it. Alyssa. And we are in store for a really nice day today, warming just a little bit more than we were yesterday into the 70s. We'll continue that warming trend tomorrow, a bit breezy as well. I'll have more details coming up next. Welcome back tonight. We'll learn where some of Indiana's candidates stand on issues at an event organized by immigrants and faith leaders. Act Indiana is an organization founded by the group Faith in Indiana. They're hosting an online forum that will focus on health care, COVID relief and pathways to citizenship. We have to understand that immigrants are a part of every Hoosier aspect of life. Um, Immigrants are essential workers. Immigrants are the people that are taking care of our roads. Immigrants are the people taking care of our homes and everything that we can think about. And I think they deserve a voice because often, because we are not, you know, a border state, um, they're often forgotten and they are put on the back burner and they really don't have anyone. But I think it's very important for them to have a representation and to have a voice because they are truly a part of our Hoosier community. Fifth District Democratic candidate Christina Hale and State Senate candidate Dr. Fatty Cadora will participate along with some other guests. Their Republican opponents, Victoria Sparts and John Ruckelshaus, declined their invitations. The virtual candidate forum starts at 7 o'clock this evening. You can register at actindiana.org slash OCT6rally.
A big honor today for NBA star and Indy native George Hill. Hill was named the recipient of the end of season NBA Cares Community Assist Award. The award recognizes a player's commitment to positively impact their communities. Hill and his Milwaukee Bucks teammates encouraged others in the NBA to use their platforms to advance social justice causes. You may remember Hill and the Bucks elected not to play during their first round of the playoff series following several high profile police shootings of black people. Hill also partnered with community leaders in Indianapolis to open the Him by Her School for the Arts on the east side this year. Seven months into the pandemic and their industry is still a long way from coming back. Next, a group of Hoosier workers who took to the streets demanding more help. And let's take a live look outside right now. Here, a view of central Indiana in the downtown area. On this Tuesday, sunny skies, and we'll get a check of the temperatures with Alyssa Donovan coming up here when the news at noon continues. Stick around. Welcome back. The live music and entertainment industry is one of many that took a hard hit from the COVID-19 pandemic. Our own Stephanie Wade spoke to a group of people that you may have seen downtown here, and they're trying to send a message to lawmakers on how they need more help. From Monument Circle to the Indiana War Memorial, a group of live music and entertainment workers pushed carts. They're empty boxes because road boxes don't have the equipment in there that you would need for a show because there are no shows. Showcasing the number of people out of work because of canceled shows and entertainment due to COVID-19. The truth of the matter is over 83,000 people in this community rely on tourism for a paycheck. And at this point in time, more than half of those are unemployed. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees representing stagehands, wardrobe workers, convention workers. It's abysmal what's happening. Saying there might be no empty storefront or restaurant you can point to and see, but this shutdown is felt nonetheless. And we would love to go back. We want to go back. We don't want the unemployment. We don't want the FEMA. We want to go back. This event is really just illustrating the shocking number of Hoosiers who have been impacted by this six month shutdown. All of the people who are out of work right now that goes for sound technicians, lighting technicians, and the list goes on. We are the invisible workforce because we are behind the scenes. The convention center itself has lost hundreds of millions of dollars because of the pandemic. As gig workers, they only get paid when they work many fearing what the industry will be if events can't convene. Bring the magic back. We do the magic. Bring it back. We need it. We all need it. We've needed it since March. Now urging lawmakers to act. Obviously, people are asking for help, right? They're losing jobs. They've been out of work. How are you helping them? How are you fighting for them? Yeah, a number of different ways. We were given $168 million in uh, CARES Act allocation in March. The mayor of Indianapolis says they have already appropriated all of those funds. An $11 million grant program specifically focused on helping the hospitality industry. But he says it's just not enough. I just want Congress to come together and, and send us uh, more support to help these families go back to work. Stephanie Wade, WRTV. As we told you earlier, today is the first day for early voting in Indiana. And just to show you that we don't have any excuses to not vote, say hello to Beatrice Lumpkin. <laughs> Ms. Lumpkin is a retired Chicago teacher. She's 102 years old, and she wasn't going to let this pandemic stop her from casting her absentee ballot. There you go, the Chicago Teachers Unit posting this picture to social media, showing Beatrice heading to the mailbox in full protective gear to put her ballot in the mail. She says the reason that she votes is because women still couldn't vote when she was born. Beatrice says she cast her first vote for President Franklin Roosevelt in 1940, and she says she has not missed an election since. Well, there you go. Wow. No excuses for anyone. <laughs> Rain or shine, yeah. Alyssa, and today is a nice sunny yeah, she day. She just showed all of us. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be a sunny day today. We are seeing those temperatures about 10 degrees warmer right now than at this time yesterday. It still feels a little bit brisk outside, and that's because we do have a breeze at 64 degrees right now in Indianapolis. Those winds right now out of the southwest, about 17 mile per hour sustained winds. And you can see on our Skycam, our Weather Now cam,
am that we do have a little bit of a haze out there as well today. So what's going on is we're under this southwest flow and as we head through the day we're going to see those wind gusts 20 to 25 miles per hour. So that's helping us bring some warmer air into the area. It also brings us a southwest flow which is helping push some of that wildfire smoke into Indiana once again which is why we are seeing just a little bit of a haze in the sky today. That's going to break up though as we head into the afternoon and those winds really take over and we'll just see a little bit more sunshine over the next couple days. High pressure is in control. Besides that, a lot of our cloud coverage has broken up. We saw a few clouds this morning. We'll continue to see sunshine this afternoon. Maybe a few light clouds filtering through just from the system to our north that has moved through the area, uh, the northern area rather. Over the next couple days, we're going to continue warming with these temperatures. Today, 73 for the high, sunny with those breezy and windy conditions across the area. Tomorrow is going to be a little bit warmer and we're going to start with those warmer temperatures in the morning. By tomorrow morning, temperatures will be in the 50s. This morning we started in the 40s, so we're climbing about 10 degrees each day when it comes to those start temperatures. And by tomorrow, we're going to be close to 80 degrees with our daytime highs. The rest of the week, we're going to stay above average. Our average this time of year, usually about 70 degrees, and we're going to be in the mid and upper 70s for most of the rest of the forecast. Now, I want to talk about Hurricane Delta. That's just to the south of us in the Caribbean right now. That's going to track into the Gulf as we head into the next couple days here and by the weekend could see some remnants from that in Indiana. If we do see it, likely it would be some showers for areas to the south. And of course, we'll keep an eye on that and let you know if that track changes. If there's a better chance of seeing some of those remnants into central Indiana, we'll let you know about that and keep an eye on it for you. Temperatures today in the low 70s, so still climbing right now with that breeze outside. 79 for the high. We should see that wildfire smoke clearing out for tomorrow and we'll see a little bit more blue sky in our forecast. That's going to be our warmest day though on Wednesday with highs almost into the 70s. Our overnight lows only in the 50s and really a nice week ahead. All right, Alyssa, it looks pretty good. So our friend and competitive eating legend, Joey Chestnut, has been a guest on the News at Noon many times over the years. I feel like we're friends. Well, he isn't able to join us in person at the moment due to the pandemic, obviously, but that doesn't mean that we can't pay him a virtual visit to see how he's passing the time. Since today is Taco Tuesday for a lot of folks, Joey recently spent National Taco Day devouring what he said was the world's largest walking taco. And of course, there's video and some of it isn't for the faint of heart or stomach. Yeah. Oh my God, that's more than I thought, wow. You're probably big enough to manage it in one hand. So that's pretty disgusting if you haven't eaten lunch yet. So that was a 12 pound walking taco. It included two pounds of Doritos, three pounds of ground beef, two pounds of cheese, one and a half pounds of salsa, onions, six avocados, sour cream, and of course, some of Joey's green hatch and jalapeno sauce. Mm, he did it. There you go, 38 minutes. That gives me a stomachache. Hopefully he has some Tums with him. All right, when we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week. And we'd like you to see if you'd like to take home a little guy named Blue. We'll introduce you to Blue and see if he'd be the perfect fit for your family coming up after the break. So it's Tuesday, it means it's time to try to find a home for our pet of the week from Indy Humane. And so today we want you to say hi to Blue. No, this isn't the famous Butler University mascot, but Indy Humane says that this Blue was full of surprises, very lovable as well. He's two years old. He doesn't need a lot of exercise, but he'll need a patient owner who loves him for being a fun loving goofball. Blue is very smart. He loves food puzzles and will be a blast to train using those all positive methods. He's He's very affectionate. He loves to be in the lap, give lots of kisses. Blue would do best in a home without any young kids or other pets. Solo guy. His adoption fee is $87.50. You can make an appointment to meet Blue and see if he's the right fit for your family by going to IndyHumane.org. Mm. Pretty cute there, Alyssa. Yeah, he's a cutie. Good mm -hmm. dog walk weather today as well. Oh, yeah. A, a little breezy outside, a little cool right now, but those temperatures are climbing. 73 for the high today. We're going to see wind gusts close to 25 miles per hour this afternoon, so you're 
you're going to notice that. Uh, warmer tomorrow, 79 for the high, and then we're staying in the 70s with a little bit more cloud coverage as we head towards the weekend. Alyssa, thank you. Thank you for joining us and making WRTV your choice for news. Come back tonight. Join us for the news at 5. Have a great Tuesday.